Hey, my warriors, here we are wrapping up 2022. Can you believe it? We're wrapping up the year. I hope you've enjoyed the series of conversations we've shared with you from various people in the warrior nation who talked about their gratitudes and fall forward moments. I too will share mine. Um, This was a really bizarre year. Lots of highs, lots of very, very low, low points. And what I thought would be kind of interesting is while we talk about ambition and achievement and strategy and leadership practices, we also talk about spirituality and we use words like soul. And I always like to think of things through the lens of a little bit more of a mystical ingredient. And so the first thing that I did when I was thinking about this conversation is I looked up what does the number 2022 actually signify from a spiritual standpoint? And it's very telling. And maybe some of you already know this, but do you know that 22 means faith, balance, hope, and trust? Faith, balance, hope, and trust. So now as I sit here and wrapping up December, I'm like, yeah, I've got a relationship to those those words. I, I feel connected to that. But there were many times many, many, many times where I felt the complete opposite of those words and felt really distanced, particularly from words like hope and trust. And trust particularly is a word that I have a mixed relationship with. But I realized that that's okay, right? We're here because we're having a multidimensional life and multidimensional experience. And it's very often through disconnect and tension where we really learn lessons, where we gain insight, where we take something and maybe improve another situation or a relationship. And so I'm okay with the lows and I'm going to share some of those with you um, as I share my fall forward moments. But I put that out there because I, I thought those words might resonate with some of you. And then when I also think about the year coming up, I was like, well, I got to look up 23, right? guess what? 23 is all about change, innovation, and new beginnings. I was like, yes, new beginnings. Okay. So new beginnings. Let's start a new practice. So at the end of every year, whatever the number of the year is, so we are in 2022, I'm going to do 22 gratitudes this year. Next year, I'll do 23. After that, I'll do 24 and so on and so on and so on. What a cool way to wrap up the year. And I'm going to do that. So I hope that this sparks something within you, shows you what an extraordinary human being and warrior you are in the office, outside the office. You're living your life in a beautiful, multidimensional way. And maybe this will be a practice that you'll pull into your own life. So I am so deeply grateful to all of you for your unending support and encouragement and enthusiasm for this work that we're putting out here every week to to encourage bigger conversations, authentic, wholehearted behaviors in the workplace. And this is my gift to you. So be well, and we're going to see you in 2023. So as promised, here are my 22 gratitudes for 2022 and my greatest fall forward. My first gratitude is that I got to wake up every day this year and I did my best. I'm grateful for the abundance in which I live never lost on me. I am grateful that I have a healthy mind and a healthy body. I'm grateful for the love, understanding, and support of my family. I am grateful that I get to work with the smartest, most creative and courageous people every day as a coach, a speaker, a mentor, and a warrior igniter. I am grateful for the doctor who saved Ross's life in March and the doctor who now is helping him return to the life he knew before his medical challenge. I'm grateful for the power and healing qualities of laughter. I am grateful that I have a platform that delivers incredible ideas and insights and messages of goodness into the world and that it's appreciated and revered. 
I'm grateful for the amazing technology of my MacBook and iPhone. Every day I'm in awe of how much you help me. I am grateful for my executive coaching circle. You see me, you hear me, you help me, and you heal me every time we speak. I'm grateful for the delicious and indulgent food and drinks I have access to this holiday season and the discipline to know my limits. I'm grateful to have the means intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, and financially to be in service to others. I'm grateful for the health and well-being of my children. That is never, ever lost to me. Every day I think of that. I'm grateful for my fuzzy slippers and Crocs. You help keep my feet happy. I'm grateful for my daily practices and rituals, especially the Holy Trinity practice. Thank you, Carrie and Kim. I'm grateful for the smell of baked chocolate chip cookies, which is filling my house right now. I'm grateful for my age and the wisdom and experience I have as a 53-year-old woman. I'm grateful for good sleep. You haven't always been within my grasp, but you have improved a lot this year. I'm grateful for my bre breathing practices and my L-theanine supplements and ashwagandha supplements. You really helped me through some very, very dark moments this year. I'm grateful for my office space. I also call it my laboratory. We've created a lot of powerful conversations, led some really cool sessions, and helped many, many people live bigger and brighter in the world. I am grateful for my angels and guides. You spoke to me a lot this year, and I'm learning how to keep that channel open, make it stronger so that I not only hear your messages, but I trust that you're there. I am grateful for having awareness to the power of gratitude. And my last gratitude is, I am grateful to be here right now, sharing my heart, my soul, with all of you, and you are there listening, watching. I see you. And my fall forward moment this year was uh, a bit of an epiphany. I like to help people, makes me feel really good. I love it when people call me with a challenge or a problem, whether it's personal, or professional. I feel so excited to get into conversation and with them. But what I realized inadvertently, I think I attract a lot of that into my life. And I will put my own needs to the side for the sake of the other person. And that hasn't served me well and has uh, drained me with some relationships in my life. And I realized that I've taken on things that weren't mine. And so I am consciously going to try to not take on things that don't belong to me. I can play a part. Maybe I can influence something, but I don't need to take it on and solve for it. So I thank all of my friends and family that have pointed this nuance out to me as something that I could look at and try to do better at. While I'm still caring for and being in service to others, I'm going to recognize places that are not mine to fix. I didn't create it. I didn't keep the problem going. Therefore, I shouldn't be the person to solve for it. And maybe I can have a lot more peace in my life because I'm going to stay in my lane more often. Maybe that one resonates with a lot of you, but that is me. This is 2022. Peace out, y'all. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Warriors at Work show. If you are interested in learning more about what we do at the Warriors at Work show and platform, be sure to go over to my website, Jeannie Coomber, and subscribe to my monthly Warrior Playbook newsletter. I share everything that I'm up to month by month, as well as some lessons and insights that I've learned. I'm also interested in hearing any feedback you have about this conversation or future topics. So reach out to me directly on jc at jeanniecoombert.com or on LinkedIn. Be sure to tell your friends and your colleagues about this Warriors at Work conversation. Subscribe, review, and rate us. It's the best way to get this message out into the world. Be well.